Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I am going to uh, begin with just a few administrative announcements. The event is being recorded, so please mute your microphones. Um, if you are not speaking, <clears throat> please turn on your videos, have a full name showing so um, our presenters can see their audience. And then uh, the rules of engagement for our panel will be explained prior to the first panelist starting their remarks. Help facilitate uh, connections by providing your name and point of contact information in the public chat channel. Include what you offer or seek from the Purple Connection community. The chat will be saved before the end of the meeting. I will clean it up of any superfluous conversations. And then um, that transcript will be shared to everyone who attends in an email tomorrow. All event registrants will receive a link to the recorded program in a few days. All right, so David has the slides up, so we will begin the program now. All right, I am Emma Toops, the Executive Chair for American Warriors and the facilitator for the Purple Connection. This event is hosted and sponsored by Toops Consulting, LLC. This is the business that David and I run. We are connectors, coaches, and consultants in Toops Consulting, and we thank you all for being here. Well, welcome to everyone who is new and this is your first Purple Connection event. For our new attendees, thank the person who invited you because they felt you might benefit by being here. And to our regulars, it is good to see you again. Here is the event agenda. I will start off with an introduction to American Warriors and the Purple Connection, which then will be followed by our educational networking program. This will include three organizational representatives in three categories, a veteran military spouse uh, entrepreneur, a military support nonprofit or community organization, and a military friendly company. After that, we will have a Q&A with the panel and community, and then some big announcements in lieu of the usual transition tips. I will start wrapping up the uh, event with um, information for how to get involved in American Warriors and the Purple Connection, and then um, some future event announcements, and then um, some lineups as far as what to expect for the Purple Connection next month. Okay, so the first thing, an introduction to American Warriors and the Purple Connection. American Warriors is a special interest group of the ACA Business Club, which is a private club with the philosophy that businesses flow, or that business flows out of relationships. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So members are committed to creating solid connections by learning and practicing the fundamentals of strategic networking and relationship building. American Warriors are club members who have an affinity with or support uh, those who have served our country in the military or through public service. The mission statement for American Warriors is to provide educational and networking opportunities for patriotic citizens who are leaders in business, and we support the transition into private and public sector business of active duty service members and first responders. The Purple Connection is one vehicle that American Warriors fulfills its mission. So the challenges of transitioning from the military is a very well-researched problem. It's evident by the multitude of military support nonprofits and community organizations that provide services to address them. Driving Community Impact was a white paper that was published in April of 2015 by the Syracuse University Institute for Veterans and Military Families. They did several years of research and uh, received thousands of surveys and determined the leading gap in services <clears throat> was not that there was a lack of them, but that there was a lack of connectedness of the services and support. Very often transitioning military feel a loss of purpose. They may feel isolated or feel misunderstood or they are overwhelmed for their need of help but are disconnected or lack affinity to the people and culture of their new environment. So how do you solve it? <clears throat> You create a partnership of stakeholders who have a common goal for supporting American warriors. The Purple Connection is a community of partnered stakeholders with a common focus 
of service, support, and care so that we can more effectively address the challenges of transition. Now, what's up with the name? There's actually two reasons for it. <clears throat> In government jargon, the color for joint is purple. When our military is operating overseas in a deployment, that environment is comprised of a multitude of seemingly disparate entities with varying purposes, but they have a common purpose through the operation that unites and focuses their efforts. The Purple Connection is an attempt to replicate this type of joint environment to support the American warrior in transition. Now, another reason is that when you combine the colors of red and blue, you get the color purple. In the Purple Connection, we are facilitating the connection of individuals who identify more closely to either the military community or the military support and business community. And when they come together, it is a purple connection. Here are the vision and mission of the Purple Connection. We create awareness to enable access and then empower action through collaboration and encouragement to expedite reintegration, support growth and healing, and enable opportunities. We do this by regularly bringing together community experts and then facilitating connections through educational networking. Here are the rules of engagement for our panel program and networking. Each participant will have eight minutes to deliver their remarks. I will be using a timer. The timer can be stopped short and given back for Q&A um, specific to that individual or used up entirely by the panelists. However, when the timer goes off, please wrap up and we'll move on to the next presenter. Once each panelist has spoken, there'll be 15 minutes for Q&A with the Purple Connection community. If you're uncomfortable with public speaking or you want to remain anonymous with your question, you can put your question in either the private or public chat channel and I will ask it for you. Questions are not limited to the topic of the day, which is niched networking, but take advantage of the expertise available on the panel this month. Please be succinct in your questions and direct them to a specific panelist or the community if it's a more general transition question. If you have a complicated question, you may ask it to discover if a subject matter expert is in the room, but if a response would take longer than two minutes to address it, I will recommend that follow-up be done after the event. After the Q&A, I will provide several big announcements in lieu of the usual transition tips. Uh, the transition tips are an educational segment um, for paradigm or process shift, or maybe a recommendation to resources that apply to the topic of the day. After the presentations, if you've not already, share in the public chat channel your po uh, point of contact information, how you serve or need support from the community. The chat will be saved. All attendees um, will get a cleaned up copy in a future email and you can follow up with each other as you like. I will do event announcements and then wrap up the event. All right, so the first veteran entrepreneur presenter is me. Uh, November is the anniversary month of the Purple Connection. So every month other than the month of November and December, I am just a facilitator for the program and provide transition tips. But today I will be speaking about my business. I am Emma Toops and a retired army major. I am a transition coach and strengths profile practitioner and I co-own Toops Consulting with my husband, David. Today, I will tell you a little bit about the founding of our business and the Purple Connection. And I will time myself just like everyone else. So let me get my timer up. <clears throat> Okay, eight minutes, here I go. Niche networking is something that I realized very early on in general networking in 2013 when I was building my first business, which was Emma Toops Agency Farmers Insurance. And it became the basis for Toops Consulting and the Purple Connection in 2014 and 2016, respectively. The long story short on why I am a transition coach today is that my separation from the military was unexpected. 
I intended to retire as a Lieutenant Colonel on my own initiative at 20 plus years of service and with a stable household income because David was in a paid career position. The plan was for me to network for over two years in my last assignment. David would get settled into a position and I would request retirement when I was ready and it would be smooth. But that was not what happened. None of that played out to become our reality. What disrupted the plan was that our military went through a partial drawdown between the years of 2010 and 2016, which changed requirements for military structure and the promotion system. It also significantly affected my career opportunities unbeknownst to me. The first few years strategically reduced or consolidated personnel requirements, bases and unit formations. However, only very senior military who had been around during the last drawdown in the 90s really understood the implications of a drawdown to our careers. It was in 2012 when the drawdown implemented changes in the promotion system. This was also the year that it was going to be my first look to Lieutenant Colonel. Ultimately, I was not selected for promotion in either 2012 or the following year in 2013. Thus, my career was cut short by over two years to my intended plan. My 2013 timeline included being deployed in Afghanistan when the board met in February, getting back to Germany, which is where I was home stationed in April, finding out in May that an administrative processing error downrange kept my deployed officer eval report from being in my board file, finding out in June that I was not selected again, requesting early retirement in July, getting approved retirement orders in August, getting back to the U.S. from Germany in September, the government shutting down for sequestration in October, and my last day on active duty, whether I I was ready or not, was November 30th of 2013. So entrepreneurship wasn't initially my intended first thing after the military, (laughs) Um, but I was actually looking to go into government work because of my uh, subject matter expertise um, in uh, CBRN, CAMBIO Rad Nukes, I was thinking FEMA or the CDC or the EPA, but sequestration and the military downsize kind of told me that working for the government wasn't such a great idea. So I decided, ah, okay, private sector, here I come. In analyzing my skill sets, I determined that the financial services industry would be a good environment. So I pursued opportunities to be a financial advisor or insurance agent. And in less than two months, I secured uh, an opportunity with farmers insurance. Oops. Back up the slide, David. I was building a scratch agency because I had no capital to buy an existing business. And though David and I know a lot of people, most of them were military or family who were located in places where I was not licensed to sell insurance. Uh, what happened, David? Um, So it would have to do a lot of networking due to literally knowing no one when we moved to greater Kansas City in November of 2013. I started networking in in, in niches where I had things in common with people. So there was a financial wellness network of other people in the financial services industry, the Kaya Mega Alumni Association, the Filipino American Association, Uh, various military associations to include the Greater Kansas City Chapter of AUSA and the Military Officers of America. Um, And uh, the FWN, the uh, Financial Wellness Network, was was how I got introduced to the ACA Business Club. And uh, I later founded the American Warriors Affinity Group with another veteran later that year in September. So how did we get started with Tubes Consulting and the Purple Connection? It was a combination of my networking and building my scratch agency and David's challenges as a military spouse. From David's side, my unexpected early retirement messed up the entire stable household income thing. But (laughs) David was able to get work uh, through a high school classmate initially. But after that opportunity kind of played itself out, he had a very hard time getting picked up by corporate America even with working with an IT recruiter because his background is in computer science. The gaps in his employment 
from being a military spouse became a really big barrier. From my side, I found that in nearly every encounter that I had when I was networking and meeting somebody, there was a knowledge gap of some measure, could be small, could be really big, regarding military and non-military culture, behavior, language, or systems and processes. And I realized over about 10 months of networking, building my insurance agency, that I was either bridging that gap myself, or I was asking about something I didn't understand. So I realized that I was doing things that a lot of people wouldn't do necessarily, which was admitting my ignorance for something so that we could bridge that gap because it was me, or I was instructing or helping someone understand something that was military. And I, and I started thinking about, you know what, this is a perpetual gap and it's addressed by education. So the decision point for us to actually start our own business was one day when I asked David about his opportunities after working with a recruiter for several weeks. And he was just so very frustrated. He said something to the effect of, oh, geez, if I have to explain myself to everyone I meet because they don't understand me on paper being a military spouse and a computer programmer, then I might as well work for myself and be a consultant. And my response was, why don't we? And uh, he was confused by my response because I hadn't really told him yet as far as this realization that I had found in my networking. So we started to talk about it and that was kind of the, uh, the beginning of our business. The Purple Connection was something that started a couple years later. A military spouse gave me the idea. Um, you know what this town needs? Something specific for the military. And she said, you ought to run it. And I was like, wait a minute, it was your idea. But it's like, yeah, but you're really good at networking. And I kind of ran with it. And that was how the Purple Connection uh, became a thing. Um, at this time, I didn't know it was going to be, you know, what it is today. It has evolved over the years because I did launch it in 2016 um, as an in-person event. Uh, it was very long um, because it was a uh, social an information fair, as well as an educational panel. Um, it is, we relaunched it um, just in um, the last couple of years. And so this is, this is now under the full purview of our company. And um, you'll learn a little bit more about that in the announcements. My time is up. So it is time for our next presenter. All right, our next presenter is our community organization. Bruce Thompson is the executive director for Talents Ascend, which is an organization that helps improve companies source talent of people with military experience, disabilities, or justice experience. He's going to inform us about what they offer in their programs. Bruce, I see you're on. You have eight minutes. You can start. All right, well, thank you very much for uh, having me come on. So first, it took me 11 months to figure out what my transition was, who I was outside of the uniform, where I belonged. I'm lucky. I had the financial uh, stabilization to take that time. Most are not. I am a retiree. I am a 100% permanent total disabled veteran. I have a buffer. So. It, it was easier for me to handle and deal with that. But during the process, I got into the nonprofit side and I work for an incredible woman who is a nine year Navy veteran who has been in HR ever since. When she transitioned, she was told all of her military service meant absolutely nothing and she had to start from scratch. So she did entry level human resource. And now she's been in HR for over 30 years. She said, I can see what's wrong with the hiring process. So she created an algorithm and said, let's change how it's always been done. And that right there got me. I am a process improvement. I am all about just because it's always been done that way doesn't mean it has to be done that way. Those are some of those words I hate the most and said, well, we've always done it. Okay, let's blow the blinders off. Let's think outside the box. So. 
how many people love to submit resume after resume, application after application, just to hear from nobody. Am I still in the running? You know, am I in consideration? Did they get rid of me? We don't know. So we at Talents Ascend are the future of hiring. No resumes, no job searching, no applications. Candidates create their free profiles listing the skills they have and that they want to use in their next position or career. Our members, aka the employers, when they create their job openings, they do not use the job vacancy announcement. They'll put operations manager and they'll list three to 25 skills that that person needs to have. And again, if they list three, you better have all three or you're not gonna be a match for them. If they list 25, then you know, that 16, 17 gets you in the conversation. So after you get him matches, it's starting the conversation. The employer reaches out to the candidate either by phone or email, depending on how the candidate said they wanted to be talked to or you know, contacted. We get right into a conversation, aka interview process. But you know what the best part of what we're doing is? We remove the unconscious biases that individuals have. So when you first match, all of our system provides that employer is the first and last initial, the skills listed, locations, and a salary range. The employer has no idea if they're male, female, 18 or 100, any kind of uh, ethnicity, and we give them absolutely no way to search for that individual. They have to make a decision based on skills, locations, and salary range if they want to reach out and talk to that candidate. When they do, they get the whole profile. And they make that decision. Are they going to interview that person or not? If they say no, they've got to tell us why. We give feedback to the candidate. If they decide they're going to reach out, they reach out to the candidate directly and they have a conversation. Hopefully, at the end of that conversation, they extend a job offer. If they do, outstanding. If they don't, they have to tell us why they didn't extend a job offer. So again, we can get feedback to give to the candidate. We are a 98% match rate, so our matches get you know, matched with employers. They have those opportunities to not be ghosted, to get feedback, to have more interview opportunities. All this is done by an amazing algorithm that puts those skills and employers together. Up until October 24th, we were called Veterans Ascend. We had been around for five years. October 24th, we converted to Towns Ascend. So where Veterans Ascend, we work with five to seven percent of the population. We now work with 100% of the population. Everybody can create their free candidate profile. We have three communities of focus, Veterans Ascend, Military, Active Guard Reserve, Veterans, all errors, all service discharge statuses, military and veteran spouses, and 18 plus year old military dependents. We always forget about the military dependents. They turn 18, they go away, and we're like, what happened to them? No, we want to include them because they're a valuable part of that community. Our second community of focus is Ability Ascend. Simply put, anyone with a disability. We're not going to talk about our weaknesses and our, dis, uh, our disabilities. We're going to talk about our strengths and our abilities. So we want to make sure they get in and have opportunities to you know, get meaningful employment. Our third community of focus is Mission to Ascent. It is for those with justice involvement. They have a criminal record. They've done their time, they've paid their, their penance, and it's time for them to break you know, the generational you know, poverty level of going out and either not being able to find employment, getting thrown back into prison, you know, or working meaningful uh, manual labor jobs, minimum wage, and not being able to break out of a poverty level. We want to change all of this so not only them, but their children and their grandchildren can get back into meaningful life and not suffer and have this generational gap. We want to serve the underserved communities. With that said, I, I will yield my time back, you know, all like 90 seconds of it, and I look forward to answering any questions you have, and I will put my information in the chat. Thanks, Emma.
Does someone have 80 seconds? Can I hear you? Sorry, Emma, we missed you. Oh, you didn't, you can't hear me? Okay. Anybody can have hear a quick question? Can anybody have a quick question for Bruce? Got about a minute in his time. All right, then we hey, will save. We're, 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 we're real quick. Hey, Bruce, thanks a lot. Um, where can someone find your information besides LinkedIn? Because um, I'm in Gardner. We're close to um, Army Reserve spot. And they always asking, people are always asking, hey, I would like to hire veterans and everything like that. So how can I share your information? So in the chat, I just gave a data dump to uh, the Talent to Send website, talentascend.com. The nonprofit side of the house is the ascendcollective.org. My email's on there and my LinkedIn profile uh, link is there. So share it away, have them reach out. We're more than happy to have a conversation and assist them with it. All right, very good. Thank you, Bruce, for your remarks. All right, we will move on to our next presenter. Okay, our next presenter is representing a military-friendly company. Christine Burroughs is the Vice President of Strategy and Operations for Powered by Purple Inc., which is a networking organization focused on, on uh, connecting professionals who are in the people business. She's gonna share with us how they are military friendly and the benefits of their resources. Uh, Thank you, Emma. You can start. Um, I'm coming to you from Wilmington, North Carolina, the beaches out there. Uh, so it's good to see everybody all over the country. Uh, I want to thank Emma, especially for some niche networking. I don't know that I'd seen that word before, but as a professional networker, I'm all in. I love communities that have some sort of commonality as a way. I know everyone's unique, but it's a great way for us to come together and support each other. And while I'm not military, I do consider myself a true military um, lover and appreciator. So I'm grateful for the opportunity. My sister Patty is a military rock star. She's a retired colonel and um, she was in the second class of women to go to West Point. And so I get to hear her story a little bit. And uh, her story may be like some of yours that she served and then she stepped away to have some children, went into the private sector and then resumed working after 9-11 um, and finished out her career. She always told me she was a quartermaster. And again, I don't understand all the lingo, just like you probably don't know, understand all the HR lingo, but the quartermaster I understand is HR stuff. So when she left the military, she went to work for um, first time for an insurance company doing auto adjusting. And the second time when she retired, she went to work for a financial services company heading up their HR company, uh, HR faction. And in both instances, she struggled. She was excellent at her job, according to her, and I'm sure she was, but she felt this disconnect between policies, procedures, people, ways, and the way that she was used to doing things. It always felt like a fish out of water and shared that with me abundantly and then ended up kind of retiring for real shortly after going into the private sector um, just because my dad was sick and she had the opportunity to go help with them. I also happen to have a niece and nephew are currently serving. I'm just giving you context there. She just came off of a um, nuclear submarine and he is going to ranger school. So all three of them are people that I admire with like all of my heart. And I, I just can't get over what they do. I admire their, their discipline. I admire their, the work they do with their physical strength, all of that. And yet I think about my own kids who are in the workforce right now and the total differences between their work. And I think, it's challenging to figure out how both of us can work together, how we can understand each other. And so, oh, I have one other one. My good friend, Jane Kaiser, who is on this call, I've known for a very long time, and Jane has worked in transition training, and she's also worked in um, curriculum for that, that transition training. And she's always telling me about the challenges that military people have in writing up their resumes, figuring out how their strengths align with the private sector, how to capture the things they did, just like Bruce was talking about. What are those skills that translate from being in the military to being in the private sector? So I'm, if nothing else, I'm empathetic. Let me just say that. But in my current job, I have this incredible opportunity of working with those courageous folks 
like Emma, who actually left and decided to be entrepreneurs. So let me tell you a little bit about what we do, and then we, I can kind of give you my little shake on how we can work together. But uh, I, have, my business partner is Jody Curtis. She's an HR consultant in central, central Indiana. She's um, kind of got it going on. Let's just say recruiting, training, HR outsourcing, all that good stuff. Uh, really well established. And she invited me about a year and a half ago to come together and build a national network of people in this workforce consulting space. She calls them people professionals. I think that is adorable, but it doesn't really work as a, a marketing term. It's really coaches, trainers, HR consultants, and speakers. And they're all over the country, but they're running their own businesses like Emma, like um, Jason LaDuc out of Las Vegas. He's a leadership um, coach. And then like some businesses like Transcend run by Aaron Myers up in Minnesota. Those are former military that have gotten their businesses going and they are joining us because they are interested in um, sort of an abundance mindset, if you will. They want to bring their business into a larger brand. They're preserving their own, but they join our network so that they can network with each other like-minded. Again, that niche networking, they can complement each other's skills. They can refer, be referred, go through training, and also kind of wear the badge of Powered by Purple Link, if you will. So that's what we do. We are in 23 states. We have about 75 consultants, and we're growing. It's a, a, it's a, it's not, it's, it's the Emma's of the world, but it's also DE&I consulting and compensation and empathy presentations. I have so much unique and incredible talent at my fingertips that it's always feeling like almost unbelievable. And my job is that I get to talk about them all the time. So I get to connect them, I get to meet them, and then I get to talk about them on LinkedIn. So if we're not connected, and I think I tried to reach out to everyone here, I post every day and I get the privilege of posting other people's <laughs> thoughts and then in, and creating engaged conversation. It's a way to showcase what they do to potential employers or to other people who might be interested. And it's also an opportunity to just create conversation around some of these really hot topics around workforce. My thoughts about military is that, uh, I'll just use a word that I, I is a buzzword, but it's actually not always used with you. You represent a diverse persona. We think of diversity as you know, race, gender, sex, age, all those things. But the military persona is also a diverse element. And we need that in our workforces. We need to be with each other around the same table. We need the opportunity to learn from each other and with each other. Um, I am grateful for the military people that are in, or the former military folks in our network, as well as in my personal life. And I would just say that those business owners who are former military, might be looking for the diversity of a person who spent their entire career in the private sector as well. Just that we can, like Emma was saying, maybe fill in those gaps together without judgment. Um, let's connect on LinkedIn and see each other's content. Let's learn from each other. And if there's ways that I can help you in your business as far as finding consultant fits, or if you know somebody who would, serve, would be well served by our network, I'd be grateful for that introduction. I'm sure I'm under time. Well, I don't know because I forgot <laughs> to start the timer. <laughs> but um, what we can do is just, um, just roll any extra time that you might still have into um, what we're gonna do next, which is the Q&A period. Uh, thank you for your uh, remarks. That was great as far as learning a little bit about um, about your business and um, the network. So let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A period. So this is going to be a 15-minute block um, of just open uh, questions um, between the uh, community and um, others in the community or the panelists, if you have something that you wanna ask specifically to clarify or learn more about any of us who were on the panel. So I am, okay, going to start the timer. Who's got a question? Who's got a question? Anybody? 
Hey, Emma, is there a Purple Connection group on LinkedIn? Actually, yes, there is. Um, but I admit I am not very good at posting on it. And so uh, I do need to get into a better routine. However, I am going to be sharing some information in the in the big announcements um, after the Q&A that might help uh, better answer that question because uh, um, part of the challenge is that it's on a social media platform. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I admit I am just not good at, at social media um, for regular things and I'm just online. So um, to answer your question, yes, but um, it, it could use some work. So we'll, we'll, um, I'll be working on that in, uh, 2023. Okay. With that said, what's the best way for me being a newbie to connect with everybody? Um, share if you haven't already in the chat channel. Okay. And what, what I end up doing is, you know, um, uh, it, it's on, a, on people's own initiative to be able to follow up, right? Because you, you become aware of who is doing what, because they share that. Um, but in between is part of the challenge um, because you know you want to you want to stay connected and start and building that relationship but the community part is part of the big announcement so i will be answering that here very soon and, and john uh, i'll throw it out uh, on here you have quite a few of us that live in the military veteran transition space uh, have plenty of resources, our ACP mentors, Federati mentors. So uh, just reach out. And when you send a, a LinkedIn connection, just uh, was on the Purple Connection last night, you know, uh, wanted to kind of pick your brain and we'll just start a conversation that way. So just uh, reach out. You never know where uh, uh, you're going to have a conversation and where doors get kicked wide open for you. Oh, something that I didn't share, but you may have seen on our intro slides is that Bruce and I are both in the um, in the platform Veterati. Uh, Bruce actually has hundreds of calls that he has done. He's the number one Veterati mentor. Uh, I, I am in the top 10. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm pleased to be in the top 10. Um, but basically, that is a it is a awesome resource that did not exist when I went through transition. But basically, it's a it's a platform that's kind of a matchmaking type of a system to where mentors like us come on uh, because we want to just help those who are following after us. Um, and then a mentor, our mentees um, are on the other side of that uh, system. And you sign up for a call. You know, the the mentors put up their availability. And um, then the mentees go and find uh, people that they want to talk to uh, based on keywords, maybe industry or maybe geography. And then you just request an opportunity to talk with that individual for an hour. And it's it, the system um, connects you uh, via phone call. It is an hour. It is free. Um, and it works out very, very well um, for those of us who are in this business um, as a volunteer or nonprofit or business, um, because it, it really is about just improving understanding and awareness for these gaps that just sometimes are inherent and we don't always know what we don't know. Yeah. And as we talk about Veterati, uh, Veterati and ACP are great blends. What I tell about it, Veterati is when you're trying to figure out who you are, what you want to do uh, post-service. You know, some of us, we, we don't know what we want to be when we grow up. So having those conversations, going through and talking to people that have been there and done different things. Uh, you know, I'm one of those ones that what I did in the military, I ran as far away from as fast as I could. So Veterati is those one hour phone calls where you can figure that out and talk to people in different industries and get informational interviews. And then once you're like, okay, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. You sign up for American Corporate Partners because that is a one-year, one-on-one mentorship with someone who is usually in a Fortune 200 company or a, a, a high-level position that has the connections and can actually talk to you more about um, what in, it entails to be in that 
industry into that organization and can really help you uh, find the right individuals. So they're great. I just tell everybody use Federati while you're trying to figure things out and use American Corporate Partners once you actually know what it is you want to do and you're ready to make that commitment into uh, that, that industry. All right. Other questions? Richard, go ahead. I hear each each of these um, Purple Connections meetings I come to, there's usually at least three or four people in the room that make mention to how they discovered uh, the passion they had about helping other veterans eventually after they come through different job and life experiences after they got out. Does that make sense to everybody? Head nods, maybe. Mm -hmm. I've heard, I've heard that kind of a pattern. And is there a way to accelerate that process? I mean, it's kind of like, in other words, how do you, mm. how do you think, think it from realizing this passion you have about helping other veterans to make it, to give it some stickability in, let's say, maybe even a, um, a business setting? I mean, you're probably most qualified to answer that. Actually, the transition puzzle paradigm that I teach is exactly how I can help someone accelerate that process. And I actually call it that as far as the um, the work that I am about is there's five components to the transition puzzle. And the thing of it is, is we learn this in the service and you probably know it in, if you're a business uh, executive is that you can't address a problem until you know what the problem is, right? Um, you don't go into business unless, there, unless there's a problem or a need that needs to be addressed. And so there's always that that needs to be at least a focal point or, or something that has been defined or um, acknowledged. And, uh, and part, of, part of the challenge of transition from the military is that the problems haven't always been ones that we have had to determine ourselves. They have been given to us as far as here is the problem and here's how we're going to fix it. Okay, go execute. Here are all the resources to enable it and okay, get it done. So that whole identifying the problem piece is part of the challenge for some people because they're not used to having to do it based on what kind of a contribution to the team um, and experience that they've had as far as identifying problems. Um, so I think just kind of getting it in front of people to determine and decide is the biggest barrier. And, you know, people use the phrase all the time as far as, you know, not knowing what to do when you grow up because dot, 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 right? All that really means is that you got a lot of value to apply yourself in, but what is it going to be? right? There, there needs to be a decision. There needs to be um, some type of a clarification. And the transition challenge sometimes is giving that opportunity and power back to the individual to choose. Because in the, in the military, we don't always have that level of authority to be able to choose or identify the problems that we want to address. I like that point about us not given the, the opportunity to choose. That's that's right. I mean, that's what you're doing in the military. When we get back out, we're we're, we're giving our identity back, sort of. And not necessarily don't know what to do with it because for so long we've been told not necessarily what to do, how to do, when to do. And so now we get out here. And it's kind of, I've been out for 20 years. I've been 20 years Air Force, and I've been out for 20 years. I've worked for a university for 20 years. I started here the day after I got out. I got lucky, very lucky. And um, I, I, I knew the value of that position. And I was working at admissions. I didn't know anything about college. I had a master's degree, but it was, I got in the foxhole. And um, so when they were talking to me about Greek life and different things, I, you know, one girl called me at admissions. She goes, do you have Greek life at the university? I said, no, no we don't. Uh, I'm sorry about that. We took the next call. Not knowing even what that was. And so it was a, it was a, it's been a learning curve for 20 years, man, to be honest with you. Um, and that's what keeps me going with it and my to-do list. But it's so interesting to me that so many veterans, regardless of their rank, <laughs> jobs they've had in the military, when they, get out, when they get out, it's kind of like starting over from scratch. It's almost like they, you, you, you skip the whole military time 
it was from the 18 year when you went in 18 years out of high school and then you do 15 20 years in the military you come back out and it's like you start at your 19 year point and what happened to the 20 years in the middle yeah and but I, see that's a different mindset it needs to change because those 19 years weren't wasted no no I'll so, give it yeah right. yeah I'll give yeah it. What, what i'm saying is what i've noticed about the civilian sector and i don't want to offend anybody but they tend to not take our military time as serious management time and training and learning. And well, what, what it is, is they don't understand it. And that's well, what we're all about here is yeah. to better understand the talent that we don't already understand. Yeah, so with that, actually, I have a question for Bruce. All right. So um, so the the resource that you offer is is signing up for a uh was it is it software as far as the algorithm and that, that they then apply in their hiring process or is it something to where they they um subscribe to a service you provide what is it exactly you're talking about the employer side of the house yeah um for the so, for the various segments of the market that you are supporting how how is your support or your service applied? Is it by you or by the, the so, um, hiring? So, uh, so what we do is we offer memberships to our platform, uh, our, okay. our algorithm. And with those memberships, they vary from uh, small business, you know, uh, hiring their first employee to household names, hiring tens and 20,000s of individuals per year. And when they have their membership, it gives them unlimited access to our system. And that's all they pay. They do not pay a finder's fee or anything else uh, to that sort. They just pay a membership fee. And you know, we do something that no one else can really offer. And that is we give the talent acquisition teams time back. There is no more sorting through 500 resumes to find two or three candidates to interview and then going right back to HR and saying, hey, they didn't work out. Give me 500 more. We're making... Uh, the spray and pray candidates, as we like to call them, you know, I'll send a hundred resumes, uh, not targeted or anything else. Uh, we're helping to eliminate that process. So uh, the hiring managers, the uh, uh, employers are really getting people that have the skill sets that are needed for their open positions. So as they go through and do that, that's where we are. And then on the flip side, you know, Richard, to answer some of your questions in regards to uh, it's a miscommunication that the current uh, DOD transition program does not help us translate our skills very well. It's in there, but everybody thinks they go to this five-day uh, TAP workshop, and it's going to answer all their questions. Well, that five-day TAP workshop is like College 101. It's, hey, these are all the things you have to figure out to be successful. So as we go through and we talk about that, you know, we have those uh, individuals that served in the infantry. Well, I don't know too many civilian jobs that are all about, you know, uh, finding uh, and killing the enemy. You know, those aren't exactly, you know, top skills listed for the civilian job market. No, but we can talk about operational planning. We can talk about management. We can talk about resource management, risk management, you know, and we can start going back through and talking all these skills that they have but no one's ever talked to him in that manner. And it's right. talking to him about skills that employers are actually looking for. And, you know, again, I was a ground communication electronics maintenance guy. Uh, I got my degrees in HR. I did not want to work in manufacturing. I did not want to be in rooms with no windows and not knowing if it was daytime, nighttime, sunny or, or raining uh, or anything in between. I, I lived in vaults. So I, I purposely focused on where I wanted to be, yet my first job out was working as a senior production supervisor and electronics manufacturer because it was what was offered to me. And it took me a little while to kind of find that that niche. And you know, it we get there, but you know, I was a senior enlisted. I wasn't there to to listen to anybody. I knew what I was going to do. And it took me 11 months to figure that out and also work through some of my uh, PTSD issues. Oh. So, oh, oh, I hear things going on. But yep, that was the timer for the Q&A period. 
And, and that's where we talk about a lot of the resources that are out. There's over 45,000 resources in the military veteran um, community, you know, organizations. And that's where we all try to help people find the right ones for them. And the ones that work for me, but it didn't work for Emma, won't work for, for Stacy or John or anyone else. So that's where we have to work as a community to assist one another to find the right things that are going to click for each other. All right. Okay. We are uh, going to move on. Um, we did start a little bit late. So thank you everyone for staying on for the remainder of the program. Let's go ahead and um, move on to the big announcements that I'm going to do. Um, this segment of the program is normally about transition tips per pertaining to the topic of the day. Um, but today I will be making some big announcements which do align with transition and niched networking. So next slide. The first announcement is that our Tubes Consulting website is getting redesigned. It's going to be much easier to self-inform on what it is that we do, um, learn a little bit about us and our backstory, and then contact us with specific requests. And overall, it's going to be updated and be much more interactive with our site visitors. It's literally been nothing but the same thing for seven years. So that, that is exactly um, the first announcement. The second announcement is that the Purple Connection is now going to be part of our website. Um, the Purple Connection will have an online presence through our website. You no longer have to be on a social media platform like link LinkedIn or Facebook to learn about or register for an event. Um, there will be a community page and a resource library for learning and engaging um, between events. It'll make it much easier for people to connect, uh, for people to refer to each other and to invite to the event by merely directing them to our website and then the TPC community link will be there. Uh, the next couple of slides are some screenshots of the site in progress. So this is going to be the, uh, the first page of our Tubes Consulting website. Um, you'll see at the top that there is the community TPC link. So that will be where TPC will have its online presence. It'll be much, much easier to um, connect um, to the TPC community because you do not need to be on LinkedIn or Facebook to access it. Um, the next slide, uh, our brand colors of purple, black, and gray are a key part of the overall look. Um, here is a slide that just kind of shows the various business segments that we offer, academic tutoring and um, career and business uh, business coaching, which is where um, primarily David and I have most of our support uh, students who are in career transition um, because they're in undergraduate school, um, high school students who are looking to go to college, and then the career and business coaching is for our um, adults who are maybe sh making shifts um, in, in work. The veteran and transition assistance is what um, primarily people like us here in the Purple Connection are um, uh, doing to support those who are looking for the next thing, um, next opportunity, maybe even considering becoming an entrepreneur. Um, organizational development is what um, I do uh, when I have consulting opportunities uh, as a strengths profile practitioner. And then similar to what Bruce does with talent um, that is military, um, you know, sometimes it is just uh, refining military programs and strategies um, of specific to diversity and inclusion and or uh, hiring military talent. So those, those are a couple uh, screenshots of our new uh, website that is still in progress. Very excited <laughs> about, about that. Um, you'll see in the background, the puzzle pieces. I uh, briefly mentioned the, uh, the puzzle paradigm that I use to help kind of focus folks on uh, certain um, segments of a transition process. So that is a key part of how we uh, individualize our guidance and support to someone. But wait, there's more. Next slide. This is our biggest announcement. We are introducing a membership model for the Purple Connection. There's going to be a Founders Club, a basic uh, members level, and then the premium and elite members. Um, and each of these levels of membership um, will be to uh, kind of respond to the intentionality for what someone might need in their transition. 
Um, it'll be for regularly occurring opportunities to learn and connect for like-minded individuals of the, the Purple Connection community. They'll, there will still be this non-member free opportunity to learn and conduct or and connect um, like what people are used to now. Um, and it's primarily, you know, for those who are just learning about us um, and do not really have the inclination for regular engagement because they are not in transition. But as far as those who are really intentional in support or needing the, the help, the, uh, the membership levels uh, provides uh, kind of varying levels of um, intentionality for learning and connecting. Next slide. So the Founders Club is a special designation for basic members who join in our pre-launch period, which is right now until the end of this year. Um, the uh, site is still getting uh, built, but the benefits for joining now versus the official launch, which will be the first of the year, is a special reduced uh, rate for as long as you're a member in good standing. Founders will also help us in developing content and resources, as well as activities that serve the community through their feedback and contributions. Basic uh, membership rate will go up on the 1st of January, and uh, these levels of membership will be paid annually, but if you break it down, those are what the monthly cost would be for someone to become a member of the Purple Connection at the basic level. Next slide. Basic membership can be upgraded to premium and elite, which affords greater opportunities for learning and connection. These membership levels would be uh, billed monthly. Next slide. This is a quick snapshot of some of the overall benefits for being a member, for a basic member. So the non-member uh, you see will still have access to information, opportunities to learn and connect. Um, where the basic membership improves upon um, what you receive is that you get an automatic event registration for attending. You don't have to do that anymore yourself. Um, and the TPC chat channel transcript will now be something that you will receive even if you do not attend. Right now, only people who attend get access to that. The other parts of this membership benefits chart is that these are all things that are going to be implemented new in 2023. There'll be the community page and the resources portal. There'll be some free tools available to basic members that have to do with assessment. Where are you? Um, giving you some perspective on that social readjustment and then also being able to post on the community page. Um, the cooperative small group learning and individualized learning are for those who really need some um, uh, more intentional support. So we're going to we're going to be implementing a transition tips Tuesday, which I'm not yet sure of is a blog or going to be kind of like an office hours or something to that effect, but something that's routine. Um, and then some masterminds that are going to be conducted quarterly. Um, individualized learning will include uh, the strengths profile and um, a consultation as far as just kind of seeing where are you and um, starting to uh, put together a plan. Next slide. This is the membership chart for those who upgrade to the premium and elite benefits. Basically, um, more access to opportunities to learn and connect, several levels of discounts when you're at these levels, and then more, more um, intentional as far as monthly masterminds and um, the indiv individualized learning as far as the one on one coaching. Next slide. Um, for someone who really needs some support and it's urgent, um, I'm going to be offering a kind of an urgent support package of three months, includes a profile, a mastermind, and um, three 90-minute coaching sessions. Next slide. I do not have any screenshots of the community page yet that is still in development, so stay tuned. Okay, so what's next? The Founders Club sign up is now until the end of the year. Um, that URL will bring you to a sales page uh, that basically just kind of describes some of what I've already described. Um, and um, you can kind of self assess as to whether or not this is going to be of value to you. And then the official launch will be in January. Next slide. All right, moving on. 
those are the big announcements. Um, what's next um, is just kind of me wrapping up the event. If you're interested in continuing to participate more intentionally in some of these type of conversations that are on facilitated topics, I invite you to become a member of the ACA Business Club and become part of the interest group, American Warriors. You have access to any business club facility um, across the country, and we even have some now overseas. You'll have access to various interest groups, not just the American Warriors, and there's over 20 interest groups in the club. You can uh, join a business development team, and then you also have access to all the organized and sponsored events of the club and the directory for members where you are um, as far as your home club and then other uh, club locations. There are opportunities to learn and connect every week in virtual as well as in-person events and also leadership opportunities if you're looking to step into leadership at the team group or club levels. The Purple Connection and Strengths Profile workshops are things that Tubes Consulting uh, organize and, um, and have available and American Warriors are always encouraged to participate in those um, and as well invite their guests. The American Warriors Discussion Roundtable is our routine meeting every month. This is the fourth Thursday from two to three central. It is a hybrid meeting. So there are folks who can um, show up and participate in that discussion virtually or, or show up at the Overland Park Club. The American Warriors Social and Guest Speaker Program is a semi-annual in-person event that um, includes um, meeting people and um, hearing five veterans and their transition stories. And then um, being able to step up into leadership for committees for American Warriors specifically. Next slide. Okay, so future events, I mentioned this a little bit already. There is no November meeting because it is Thanksgiving. And then the December meeting will be uh, no discussion topic, but on online social. Next slide. TPC referrals is an email invitation opportunity that will uh, allow folks to be intentional with connecting with me and up to three others in the community. It is done on Zoom and it is a two round kind of speed networking opportunity to learn about somebody in the first round. Um, everybody uh, gets an ask. And then in the second round, people respond to those asks. Next slide. Next month, we are not gonna have a panel program, but we are going to have a Purple Connection. It is going to be a social. Um, three Fun flat Facts is kind of the theme of it. And uh, last year it was two truths and a lie. Um, but this year, the fun facts are gonna be about your origin name, whether it's your own name or your business. Some people have some pretty cool origin names, um, origin of names. Um, realization of purpose, and then a lesson learned from a success or challenge. So everybody who attends um, will be called upon to share your fun fact. So prepare for that. Next slide. Contact me if you have any questions whatsoever about anything that has been uh, presented today. If you have opportunities um, that you're seeking, connections that you are seeking, um, let me know. You can send me an email, give me a phone call, or sign up for a free consultation um, using my calendar uh, sch scheduler. Connect with me on LinkedIn. And thank you, everybody, for sticking around. It did go just a little bit late. Thank you for being here. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you at the next event. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. <laughs>